You're listening to a bonus episode of The Dairy Age, featuring Chagisk's weekly Let's Talk Dairy webinar series, which is also available as a podcast. So, good morning, everybody. You're welcome to this week's Let's Talk Dairy webinar. This week, we're joined, as always, by a Grass 10 team member, but um, with Joseph Dunphy on, on with us. Um, Joe, we're going to keep you a little bit longer today, I think, just given the current... Uh, the current situation on farms. So uh, rather than having a second speaker on, we, we'll uh, we'll interrogate Joe for a little bit longer and see if he has any um, if he has any golden nuggets of information as such in terms of. And really, the title Joe is is dealing with the current situation, which is which is challenging and has been now for a number of weeks. But then, I suppose, is there other things that we need to be thinking of from a grassland perspective as well? Um, over the coming weeks and, and, and heading into the autumn period. So as always, folks, post your questions. Um, as we know, it is challenging out there on farms. Post your questions and, and we'll endeavour to ask them as we go. So I suppose, look, at thanks, Joe. Joe, you always seem to kind of uh, uh, get the short straw as such, um, but we're glad to have you on. I, I'll start, I suppose, normally where we would, you know, what's the current situation out there on farms in terms of grass supply? Um how is it looking from that perspective? Yeah, so look, good morning, James, and morning to all your all to all your uh, to all your viewers this morning. Yeah, so again, look, at, we're coming off the back of a, a couple of well, we what what is a very very difficult month of July. I was just looking up some information there for the news the other day, James, and when we look at the some of the weather information for July, like for of the long term average rainfall, we've had four times the rain we did in July. The, this year than in 2022 and twice the rainfall in 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 the, then of 2021 if we take a look at like the average of some locations around the country they are the long term averages at and rye during july 259% moor park 242% bally hayes 210 dunsanian mead 300% three times the average rainfall so i know we were coming off the back of a dry june but like even looking at some of the stuff there from met Aaron as well there was so many consecutive days of rain in july there was nearly 15 mm. 16 17 in spots so it was just every every day some there seemed to be a couple of mill or you know just topping topping farms up so as you said yourself James it's, it's difficult and again it's there's different farms that are suffering like there's some there's some farms that are you know have that are that are wet but that they're managing by maybe some of the techniques we'll talk about in a few minutes the on off graze and uh, uh you know the, mm. the back fence and stuff like that but then there's the, then there's other people in different scenarios that just they just had too much rain and there's there's housing of animals going on but just yeah. on the just just on the, the the pasture base figures for the week, James, we're probably looking at, you know, it, it, even though it has been wet, growth are kind of sticking around sixty for the you know for the last week. You know, the, the average farm cover has bumped up a bit again to seven fifty two, cover per livestock unit at two two three, and probably on average of about say a diet of around about nineteen kilos, eighty nineteen kilos going in there at the minute, and around three kilos a meal on average going in, in the diet pre grazing yields of around fifteen eighty. Okay, okay. So I suppose there's there's plenty of grass on farm which is seems to be the consensus out there i suppose it it nearly comes on to the point of of dealing with it and how, how do we get it into um how do we get it into them do you know what i mean so yeah. i suppose for those farms and, and as i said look at grazing conditions are difficult but they're they're different from farm to farm as such um some people are, are managing not too bad, whereas others um, are really struggling, Joe, I suppose. For the ones that are, are, are struggling, I suppose, you mentioned some of them there. What, what's the what's the messaging or what's the advice, I suppose, to try and keep grass in, in the diet and, and continue to work away through the rotation? Yeah, well, it comes back to we we probably mentioned it back in back in in in, in at the end of April there when, when things were wet. But it's it's number one. It's always feed the cow. Two avoid damage and three hit residual. So I suppose in you know on those particular dry farm or particularly heavy farms at the minute that are that are struggling like the the, the one the most important thing is to feed the cow at the minute like so and try and keep you know try and keep as much grass in the diet as we can but by and and protecting the paddock still at the same time. So probably in that scenario it's still trying to get the two bouts of grazing in per day, um, James, um, and maybe it is pulling them off in you know in, uh, at an earlier time in the day and bring them in and or and maybe it is bringing them in at, at night time too 
for a, with, with a small allocation of silage for the night time um, in, you know, in, in those particularly wet and in those particularly wet farms at the minute. Another option to a thing to, 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 you know, to, to consider is, and I have heard of one or two people are just housing young stock just might be for maybe only for, uh, for maybe for a week or something like that, because as you know, James, young stock heifers, you know, in calf heifers, the walking they do is absolutely phenomenal. And, you know, and particularly on heavy parts of farms, they just, will create absolute muck so they they, to... they nearly often do more harm than than maybe the cows as such um yeah you mentioned they're feeding the cow allocations um something when you when you look at group reports uh having a pba some people are allocating 19 20 kilos some people are allocating 17 kilos where does it need to be at um uh, Joe, to make sure cows are fed properly, I suppose. I would need to be. We need. We we need to be talking about nineteen kilos these days, James. Like you know, um, probably in those and those like, probably two to three kilos of a, you know a good quality nut at the minute, just with the way with the way weather is when dry matters are low. And I suppose you know the the, the good quality silage going into if people are on off, um, you know, or 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 that or, or in that scenario, there is plenty. If you know, we'll we'll talk about maybe the drier farms there in a second, but like. Mm. You know there is plenty of grass there. If you can get away without the silage, you know keep keep going. But again, it's the allocations. Try and get the allocations right. And when they are like, if we just look at, I'll just have there like some of the some of the dry matters from the last week. You know, mm. um, more park just in around thirteen Bally Hayes, thirteen Athenry, fourteen. Like you know, give the cows that extra little bit of the break. You know, yeah. and and let them let them fill themselves. Um, especially that on and try, yeah, just to when keep you're them on- full. Yeah, when you're on that and you're kind of talking there really that probably the vast majority of people at this stage, unless you're on an extremely dry farm, uh, Joe, need to be on 12-hour allocations, yeah. bag fencing, um, just to limit damage. We don't, we want to do as little damage, I suppose, going into, we're not, we're not, we're not near autumn grazing as such um, in terms of that last round yet and we don't want to be doing a lot of damage. But I suppose <clears throat> it's just making sure that cows aren't pinched in that period, is it? Yeah, it'd be very, it'd be very easy. Maybe if it's like if if you've moved to slightly lighter covers and you're trying to get cows to do a good job. But I think you know, as we we go back to our three priorities, it's you know feed the cow first and avoid damage. You know, it's mm. you know um, cows. If if if, it, if the grass is anyway clean, as if it you know maybe two two rotations ago, um, it got it got a it you know it got baled or got maybe topped or something there with the thronians we were talking about coming out of June. You know, grass ground can look. Like grass should be okay they should do a decent job without being having to be pushed too hard on it yeah okay another one that's coming up and you mentioned it there in terms of low dry matters and and very low for this period in the year and it's maybe often a conversation we'll be having a little bit later is for the people that have have good quality grass clover swords just managing them joe and i suppose that's important with dry matters being low lots of wet weather um what should farmers be doing to make sure that they, they, they don't have issues in terms of um, bloat? Yeah, so look, said low dry matters and the amount of rainfall we had is, you know, it is and very lush, very, very lush. Um, you know, we're back in the vegetative stage of grass at this stage. So, we're, you know, the last any farms you go to now, the quality is very, very good in general. Um you know, very, very good, very, very lush swords at the minute. So, like, you know, there is, there is, there is, there is risks of bloat at the minute. Um, have heard of one or two cases that are out there on the ground. So that you know, that we want to avoid it, avoid it if possible. So I suppose look at the 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 the, the, the couple of key points are the bloat oil. Okay, and we'll come back to just it in a second. But I suppose it's vital that the bloat oil is in there. We know that the cows are probably going to be drinking a considerable lot less than they were earlier in the year. Say, you know, they might be only back to maybe drinking 20 or 30, 30, 40 kilos where uh, of uh, our litres of water. Whereas maybe that, that might have been double a couple of weeks ago. So, but still have it in if you are on a high percentage of your farm that's, you know, that that that's in, that, you know, they're, they're, they're grazing, they're grazing grass clover swords. I suppose... A small allocation of fiber as well is absolutely no harm. Like with sort of there's people who have who have you know good 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 um farms of clover that are maybe throwing a bit of straw at the barrier, maybe a little bit of hay or just dry enough silage that maybe they're picking at a bit of it when they when when they're coming in for milking. That's no harm either. And I suppose twelve hour wires again and 
what 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 some individuals are at is that we call it a breakfast break. So they're putting out a break in the in the in the paddock, um, particularly on those on these damp mornings. Now we call it these risky mornings, and maybe cows finishing out a paddock the night before. They're coming into the parlour. They're going out hungry, um, not awful hungry, but they're just there's a bit of an edge on them after cleaning out a paddock. A breakfast break is a a break that's safe from. They're going out at we call it. They're going out between seven and a half seven in the morning. It's a two or three hour break that when you go out to lock them in, you will then lift that wire and let them out into the, the, the remainder of the paddock. And what that means is it forces them to eat that grass and clover. Um, so they're getting enough, they're getting they're getting plenty of grass into them. And um, along with the clover, they're not going around essentially selecting out all the clover in a, we'll call it a two grazing paddock or something like that. Mm. Immediately they're, they're having to, they're having to, um, you know, and, and I suppose the other thing is, James, just, just one other thing on that is that, say for instance, you have a hundred cows and you're milking in a, a 14 unit parlour, just hold on to maybe five or six rows six or seven rows in the morning and let off we call it 60 or 70 of them together to that to, to the field rather mm-hmm. than letting the first 14 out early in the morning at half six and having a complete you know free for all on clover there so yeah. just try and hold at least 50 percent if not a little bit more of the of the the herd so really yeah uh, it's as you say it's and, and you don't want cows um going in hungry i suppose is into grass clover paddocks either that they're not if you feel cows were a little bit underdone in in the previous um, allocation, I suppose you nearly should be trying to stay away from that paddock um, yeah. and just making sure that they're they're going in as, as full as possible. And coming back to the bloat oil, um, a lot of farms maybe some farms maybe have a high percentage of of clover on, but a lot of farms it's it's a few paddocks here and there um, that have been put in over the last few years, um, Joe. This these dispensers that we drop in uh, drop in the drinker, I suppose. I'm going to a clover paddock this morning. Um, I'm dropping my dispenser in the drinker. Um, is that okay? No, it's it's pretty much a waste of time, James, because she's going to have her her couple of hours. You know, she'll have an hour of grazing done before she even goes to the drinker. Um, so the the blood the 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 bloat oil needs to win the day before. And come here, then I suppose the other thing is in terms of current recommendations, re fertilizer. Um. Where is that at, I suppose, given there's such a variation in terms of ground conditions? What's the advice regarding fertilizer? Yeah, so again, look at at the minute it depends, you know, it largely depends, James, on the on the farm, the the farm type at the minute. Again, there's probably people now where we're Thursday today. I know there's a bit of there's rain again, there's nearly rain every day, but probably the the amount as we get towards the, the week, I think there may be rain on Saturday night or something like that. Fairly heavy rain, but we want to avoid you know deluges of rain anyway so keep an eye on the forecast we want to avoid any you know any heavy 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 downpours when it comes to spreading fertilizer if you have if you have you know dry fields on the farm you know continued you know that are that are grazed recently it's no it's okay if we're going ahead with them but just keep an eye on the on the ground conditions um probably you know on grazing field probably probably open it slightly for the for the early for the early august shake a little bit we're going to be extending the rotation length now so probably somewhere between 20 and 25 units again depending on depending on your allowances on farm okay yep yep for paddocks then maybe when it does and and it, it has to at some stage in terms of the weather conditions turn paddocks that have got a little bit of damage any benefit to a bit of p and k in there um, yeah what's the thoughts there yeah, a bit of P and K might be no harm, James. Maybe like um, you know, phosphorus always always helps to 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 knit a bit of ground after after uh, after uh, a bit of damage. You know, something like a bit of eighteen six twelve or something like that will 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 help the will help that paddock. Okay, very good. Um, the other thing is, and and something that's I suppose cropping up and is frustrating farmers at the moment is look at some people have second cuts done, but there's there's still a fair share of them. Um, still a fair share of them to be done. But this whole area in terms of around fodder, I seen the uh, National Fodder Committee. The survey is completed for that. Um, there's about fifteen percent of farms, I think, if I'm, I'm right in saying, uh, showing a deficit, Joe. But mm-hmm. uh, nobody envisaged as such maybe having to feed silage um, on some farms at this stage. So what's the What's the advice around um, the whole area of fodder and the fodder situation at the moment? 
Well, yeah, James. I suppose look at the the key thing to everything in terms of when it comes to father is to is to is to act early or as early as possible when you realise that there maybe there is an issue on farm or there is a slight deficit. I suppose probably since the last time we talked about about father, you know. Some people will call it, you know, during the, it's <laughs> July has been a smash and grab for for second cut silage. Um, as you said, some people have have got caught out and haven't got it yet, and now we'll probably just have to wait until ground conditions allow. Um, but probably the best thing to do, we'll call it people who have got their second cut in review you know or update your fodder budget from earlier if you were short last year you did a fodder budget there say after first cut or something update that fodder budget now you know have a look at the settled height of your second cut pit uh review where you are and make a plan then that if you still are short and i suppose the key thing is we don't want people that have just have you know they need a thousand ton and they and they end up how with a thousand ton we want the somewhere between the ten and twenty percent surplus to you know to to allow for a time like now or a wet October or a wet February next year, you know, so to have that surplus available on farm. So the key thing is to, you know, to update your update your budgets and 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 react quickly now if if needs be. For those farms that do find themselves in deficit really, what are we talking about there? Looking at maybe is there surplus stock on farm that, that don't need to be carried next winter? And I suppose, as you say, it's, it's about trying to get feed in the yard early and, and get, get feed sourced. Yeah, hundred percent. So, like on yeah, on the on the it's it, it probably I suppose last year with the high milk price, people were reluctant maybe to sell off those few maybe a few a few culls or something like that, and maybe they were kept over, or maybe the empties were milked on later. But you know, milk prices dropped this year. Maybe fertilizer price probably on the way back up a little bit. Meal price probably on the way back up a little bit with maybe what's going on as well. So it may be a better you know maybe a year that to con- just to consider those we we'll call them late cash maybe you know maybe maybe empty cows something like that um if you are if you you know especially if you are short in in winter feed and i suppose then it's to it's to to you know do i need 40 bales 50 bales whatever many bales i need and maybe go early to the market for them if needs be mm. yep yep very good the last point i suppose i wanted to ask you about and it's um we we have to talk about it as such, but it's strange to be talking about it in such conditions. Is this whole area of of autumn grass and and building cover and extending the extended the period? And I suppose for a lot of farms, the most important part of that last round is yes, we want to extend the extend the rotation, but it's it's about setting the farm up for for spring as well, Joe. So yeah. I seen there recently in terms of uh, with a chat with advisors, you had some good advice about about that. Can you maybe run through that? I suppose the first question is: Is every farm the same? Um, often there was there was the one blueprint as such previously. I suppose that has been tweaked, um, and we've realised that's not the case over the years. So maybe just a few key points around autumn grass. Yeah, well, I suppose just I suppose. Bringing it back very, very simply, James, is I suppose why are we doing it? And I, you know, and the, and the, the big point is, especially with some of the costs of the alternatives where they are now. If we take the old money, James, we call it summer grass worth four cent a kilo and autumn worth eleven. Now this is before any, you know, any increases came, so we could call that thirty or forty percent higher now in terms of those values. But essentially, what we're trying to do is we want we want to essentially buy grass at at four cent a kilo or for or forty euro a ton. And sell it back to the cow later on in the year at 110 euro a ton, and that's it. Is it? If someone said to you, "Would you invest in something at 40 euro a ton to get 110 of a return?" The reality is, you will probably say yes. So essentially, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to build a bit of grass on the farm now during August cheaply, and sell it back to the cow later on in the year when the costs of the feed alternatives are much, you know, are much higher. So if we said it was four and eleven, like you can pretty much put 30 or 40 percent on that with where the costs of the alternatives are now on farm so that's what we're trying to do that's you know, it's essentially we'll go through some of the targets there in a second but it's, we're just trying to build that little bit of rotation length on farms and i suppose as i said james no no two farms are the same um the the two the two things are two key considerations are land land type is going to have a huge a huge a huge impact on it and also grazing infrastructure is going to have a huge impact on it because you may have a farm that we would call reasonably dry but if the grazing infrastructure is poor if there's large paddocks if the access is poor into them 
sometimes nearly a heavier soil might <laughs> might graze, might do a better job in the autumn because there'll be less damage done because they're able to get in, in cows in and out of paddocks and uh, you know a bit a bit quicker and you know are, are with, with with less damage and I suppose from 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 that outset it's it's important to think of um there's be paddocks on your farm where there were three grazing paddocks all year they're going to be five grazing paddocks or six grazing paddocks later on in the year we call them five like we just with some of the heavier covers on them so you have to think of that okay is is that field conducive to having two more grazings in dodgier weather later on in the year and if it's not you just don't build a cover there like, you know so yeah. um I suppose the two the two differences, James. We'll call it. We start with the heavy soils. Farmers maybe are you know farmers farmers that way. Like with the average, we don't build past nine hundred really, and like that's kind of where we want to get. And the what we don't want there is we don't want any covers maybe over eighteen hundred. The only caveat to that is maybe there's a field that's quite dry and has very good access on it. You may decide on that field to maybe build a twenty, you know, up to two ton or a little bit over. But the reality is, is we want to keep the pre grazing yields to eighteen hundred and you know the average farm cover in around 900 okay um on the drier soils um you know we can probably build to 1050 1100 no problem on that allowing the, the pre-grazing yield to probably get up to 2200 but then again it comes back to it again james the grazing infrastructure has to be good like if we're if we're not going at it and it's probably something that's been leveled at us in the past james is you know oh, i can't build 1100 on my on, on my farm of an average farm cover well if the grazing infrastructure isn't there don't even dream about it like you know it's it it's as simple as that if you have multiple access points you've roads on two sides you know you, you know uh you know so stuff like that you can do a hell of a lot in the back end with you know with you know a 1050 or 1100 of a, of a of a peak cover yeah so that's really it's it's really nine 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 fifty 950 for the for the for the heavier farms the the big thing there is okay you're going to be in 10 days earlier probably um but the reality is if you can set the farm up right and you're not carrying um unwanted grass as such across across and into next spring is what we don't want whereas for the other for the drier farms you're looking at but that 1100 1150 is probably where it's at when when are we starting this building grass um uh discussion or when does it start on farms so again james largely based that's largely based on your stocking rate so you know i suppose we'll we'll come out from, from someone that's maybe stocked to 2.5 2.6 now at the minute james maybe with all the silage ground back in they probably don't even need to think of, they're actually probably thinking about taking out grass if the weather conditions allow in a normal end of july early august they'd be taking out bales until nearly the middle of the month you know yes. because they're going to build so organically on the farm um it's more of the we'll call it the, the the people who are stocked at maybe three on the milking platform or three and a half so if someone's at three and a half with the reality is, is we're there now james we need to start keeping an eye on it um we kind of said you know someone at three and a half first of august you know or first week of august someone at three of a livestock unit probably the second week of august so uh it's where that's where where we need where we need to be um, very good Another question in there, and it's around it's around milk ureas and and just a comment that they've risen um in in recent weather. What's the best way to counteract that excess end to grass? And it's really around protecting, I suppose, both fertility performance and solids. It's probably that that's coming a bit, I'd say, from um background in in that dry period and 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 maybe look at fertilizer applications. Joe probably is one and. Is it, it look at in terms of the protein in your ration is another, but I wouldn't get too concerned if it's if it's if it's only elevated for a for a short period in terms of for that kind of maybe five to seven days or whatever it is it normally settles back down or what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, no, I I I'd agree with you. Actually, funny, I was talking with a group the other day and they were saying that they thought. They actually only rose a bit when the rain came there in July and they've actually stayed fairly steady. Um, mm. probably. This year, there's probably not the huge amounts. I'd say people are still kind of watching themselves on the nitrogen. You know, people are being a little bit more sticking to, we'll call it the 18, 19 units on grass only. You know, whereas maybe other years there was more fertilizer going out, you know, call it three or four years ago, maybe there after droughts and stuff like that. So I'd say there's probably not the background in in other years that they're that you know or this this year than there was in other years just from what, what what i've seen anyway so far yeah yeah very good i suppose then if there's no more questions folks um 
I think I'm happy enough. We've covered a lot of stuff. Um, Joe, I suppose if you were to wrap it up now for the next for the next week, ten days, I suppose, just to summarize there what what we've spoken about. What's the key things? Um what's the key things our listeners need to maybe focus on and, and think about? Yeah. So again, as we said from this from from the start, James, just on the on the on the, on the current management, you know, it's it's um twelve hour wires on, on, on we call it dry farms, it's it's twelve hour wires. Watch yourself that you don't pinch the cows, give them the good f- full allocations, probably two to three kilos a meal in that scenario, especially when dry matters are so low. Um, heavy soils, it's trying to protect, it's trying to feed the cow and avoid and, and, and avoid damage. You know, if it means that cows maybe have to go on off grazing, brought in at night with a small allocation of silage, you know, that be it. But, you know, we want to avoid huge, amount, huge amounts of, 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 of damage being done. Um, you know, the fertilizer where it's OK, probably up, up in it slightly now, maybe 20 to 20 units just when we're extending that rotation length now into August keeping an eye on the on the bloat and also the other techniques on the bloat it's not a one a one one thing is going to solve is going to solve everything it's the the breakfast break you know it's the bit of fiber you know and it's bloat oil and all in and not letting cows into paddocks hungry and and i suppose then um, the, the the last or the two last points on the fodder budget and updated if the second cut that's after being harvested in you know in the last couple of weeks and reassess think of cull the, the culls you know from moving off maybe a little bit earlier or going to the market for some for some bale silage and lastly on the autumn targets look at it's in this week's newsletter um you know lower stock maybe 2.5 2.6 are okay for for another number of weeks but the higher stock people maybe on three and a half on milking platforms really need to start looking at the targets from now on and assessing assessing where they are in relation to and start extending that rotation length out you know during 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 August. So if we take an example, maybe someone at three, you know, we want them to be want them to be at say between twenty five and, and and thirty days by the end of the month. So just yeah. have a look at the the targets and go from there. Lovely, appreciate that. Um, as always, hopefully um, uh, there's light at the end of the tunnel in terms of improvement in weather next week. And as always, folks, um, thanks to Joe Dunphy and Farm Safely. That's all for this week's bonus episode from the Let's Talk Dairy webinar series and don't forget to look out for more bonus episodes each week. I'll be back with the usual Dairy Edge podcast on Monday so do listen in then. I'm Stuart Childs and thanks for listening.